All right, hi there, Year 10. Uh, we're up to video number two. If you haven't seen video number one yet, pause this one, find video number one on our Google Classroom because this one builds upon video one. So it won't make as much sense if you haven't seen video one just yet. Today's video, I'm gonna be looking at the properties and characteristics of timber. This is where I start looking at things like grain direction, defects that exist inside of wood, and what a solid timber really is. Now, by the end of today's lesson, you're going to be able to identify the direction of grain on a timber. You'll be able to identify defects that affect timber, so some of the different defects. You will be able to understand how the defects that we have in timber impact their strength and their appearance, and you will complete the quiz on timber defects. So we're gonna get started. Now, I've shared these videos with you uh, sorry, these slides with you as well as this video. Um, and this link is also linked into our Google Classroom, so you'll be able to watch this if you want to. Um, but if we start by thinking about grain direction, we have to first understand what grain is. Now, grain is those dark lines that you can see running up and down the length of your piece of wood. They are these circle parts, they are dark, they are the growth rings. Our growth rings, when we cut our tree, become our grain. Now the direction of our grain is really important when we're using different machinery because if we're trying to use a thicknesser, for example, and you put your timber in around the wrong way, then what will happen is the blade of the thicknesser will actually catch the grain and tear it out of the piece of timber and you'll end up with a whole heap of chunks and holes in your piece of wood. So what we want to do then is make sure we understand grain and the direction of the grain. So we'll get started. Let's have a look. The arrow okay, that you can see here, okay, following these loops, following these circles, is the direction of your grain. It points in the direction of your grain. So we could say that the tree, the grain direction is running up and down this piece of timber like this. It's not running sideways. It's not running this way. It is definitely running that way because we're using the arrows as an indication. At the end grain of the tree, we can see the rings here. These are the growth rings from the stump of the tree. Where the center of those circles would be is the heart side, okay? Where the heartwood would be. Then if you look on the side to work out the grain lines, the grain lines will point together and they come together at a single point eventually. That also indicates that the grain is going in this direction, okay? So I'm gonna play this video and I'm going to, I'll just have it muted. You can watch it um, by clicking on the link in Google Classroom if you wanna know some more. Um, but it's a really good demonstration on how, sorry, on how the, um, how the grain actually works. So I'm just gonna skip forward to this part just here. And you can see the gentleman is drawing on the arrows on his tree. So he's just used a texture to trace the grain lines. And you can see he's pointing that the arrows help you to understand which way to point it into the thicknesser. Now, because of the way that the thicknesser runs, it will actually catch those, pick them up and tear them out. So when you are using a thicknesser, you actually would work your way with the arrows pointing away from the blade. Okay. Now you can see on the second piece of timber, he's actually drawing, there are two arrows. There's an arrow pointing to the left of the screen and an arrow pointing to the right. So what needs to happen here is he needs to determine using the grain slope on the side, which way is going to reduce the amount of damage caused to his piece of timber. So that there was grain direction. Now I'm gonna start talking to you about timber defects. Now, when we think about a defect, a defect is something that is impacting the wood and preventing it from being as good as it could be. And there are a whole heap of different types of defects that can exist. Some of them are naturally occurring. Some of them, um, and when I say naturally occurring, I mean they occur as a result of the tree growing. And some of them are, are caused by external factors. These first two are external factors. So we'll get started on the first, insect damage or insect defects. Termites are a great example of an insect that can cause a defect in a timber. What you can see on your screen is 
This is the frame of a door inside of a house. And you can see all these little holes here. This is where the uh, white ants or termites have gone through and they've eaten their way through the timber. And because they've eaten the timber and it's now full of holes, it's lost its strength. Now by losing its strength, the timber is now defected and is no good anymore. There are other types of insects as well that can uh, impact your timber. It's not just white ants. Uh, there are, there are uh, insects known as timber borers or wood borers that there are some different varieties that target specific trees and these insects actually eat through specific species of trees um, in the same way that a termite does. Okay, and as soon as they've eaten through and they've damaged the structure of the timber, it's no longer strong and is no longer useful. We also talk about fungal defects on timber. Um, this is where different funguses and moulds have started to grow on timber. It could be a result of water damage, could be a result of fungal or, or other sort of um, microscopic biological things starting to grow on the timber. And again, these sorts of things start to impact the structural integrity of the, of the wood. They can do this by either increasing the moisture or decreasing the moisture. Um, and preventing it from maintaining its structure. So there's actually a thing called dry rot, which is where the timber um, loses all its moisture over time as a result of a uh, fungus, and the timber basically becomes like a, um, like a tissue that's very old. So if you were to grab the piece of timber with dry rot, it just crumbles in your hand as if you had your house built out of sand. Moving across, we have a naturally occurring defect. This is a knot. Now, you, you've heard of knots before. Knots are, are not um, that great for creating, um, creating furniture. Sometimes they are a feature, sometimes they are not. Now, what we need to keep in mind, a knot is formed by a branch. So if you've got a tree trunk, you've got a branch coming out, when that tree is cut down, that's what it looks like. You have a knot going through the center. It's a little circle section going through the center of the wood where the tree branch was, okay? Because the tree branch doesn't just stop here. In the center of the tree, it actually carries all the way through. So that knot is a defect because the grain is actually changing direction. So normally your grain is going up and down. You can see that in the grain lines. The grain's going up and down. And where it comes here, the grain changes direction and goes around the knot. And it also means this, this knot has grain going this way. So if you've got grain going this way and grain going this way, well, that's a clash. So the strength of your timber is changed. Now your knot can be alive or it can be dead. Now a knot that is dead usually has a really dark black ring around it and you can push it out of the piece of timber and it just falls out quite easily. Some knots are really light in color and they have a light greenish sort of ring around it. They are living knots and they are actually okay. Living knots are quite good. Um, they don't impact the structure too much. But a dead knot definitely makes your timber weaker. Knots are sometimes used to add character. So instead of having a plain piece of timber, having a knot in your wood actually makes it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, so quite often people choose to have a knot um, on display. Now if you've got a solid timber dining table, it's very likely that you're gonna have a knot here or there um, built into it as a bit of a feature. One of the other defects that impacts timber, and these are where we start looking at the structural defects. Imagine that your tree has been cut down, you've got a nice straight piece of timber, a nice plank of, of wood that you've bought from Bunnings or you've bought from the shop, and you get it home and you realize that it's got this sort of, this cupping shape that's happened. This happens when there is water in the tree when it's cut down, then it gets dried out a little bit before it gets sent to the shops. Now, if you dry it out too fast or you dry it out too slow, then it actually stops the timber from drying out straight and it causes it to cup. Okay, and cupping is where the distortion happens across the width of the timber, okay? Not along the length, so it's still straight in the length, it's still straight in the thickness, but it is distorted in the width, okay? And that's a result of the seasoning, the timber drying out too fast. Similar, another similar defect called bowing, 
also caused by seasoning where the timber's drying out too fast. This time, the defect is along the length. It's straight on the width, straight on the thickness, but the length has the defect in it. That's known as a bow. The next one across is called a split. A split, again, is caused by seasoning. It's where the timber rapidly dries out and not only rapidly dries out, but it starts to crack and fall apart. Now, a split is very significant. It's where the timber has not only separated at the top, but it's separated the whole way through the piece of timber and it's no longer useful um, where it's got a split in it. A split is a little bit different from a check. A check, you can see, again, the timber has split apart, but it hasn't split the whole way through. It's only split part of the way and it's still connected potentially on the bottom. Okay, so I'll flick back, see how the split goes the whole way through and a check or checking only goes part of the way through. And this is where the timber fibers open up because when the, when the wood was dried, it dried a little bit too quickly. The last one here, we've got shake. Okay? And shake again, is caused by shrinkage during seasoning. Okay? The, the tree has dried out a little bit too quick, too rapidly, and it's caused it to split apart. It is perfectly fine on the length, it's perfectly fine on the width, on the width. It's the thickness, okay, around the growth rings that have started to split apart. We call this a shake. So that there are the defects on timber, okay? I'll scroll back through them. We're at the end of today's lesson. We've talked about grain direction, how to work out which direction the grain is going. We've spoken about some of the naturally occurring defects and some of the uh, externally occurring defects, insects and fungus idol, for example knots and some of the shrinkage based defects that are caused by seasoning happening too fast. That's the end of today's lesson and uh, once you've finished watching this video and you've updated your notes in your uh, notebook, uh, it's now time for you to move on to the quiz that we've posted for you on Google Classroom. Good luck!